I couldn't take my eyes off of him. All day long at the, at the swimming pool, I, I couldn't stop watching him. Something about him was, I don't know, different. I mean, for instance, the color of his swimming trunks was like uh, light orange, I guess, is the way I would put it then, you know, as a 12-year-old boy. Um, although now, as an older gay man, I might say tangerine or peach or sunset, but at that point, I just said light orange. You know, and it was like maybe a little too light for, for a boy. And, and it made me feel a little weird about my own swim trunks, which were light blue, but were they too light? And could I really trust my mom to buy my swim trunks from now on? And also some of the other kids had said that they thought that maybe his name was Kevin or, or Brian or something, and that he was gonna start school with us in a couple of weeks when school started. But I didn't want to think about school because it was still summer and, and tonight was the best night of summer because tonight was the annual night swim when the pool stayed open an extra two hours, you know, from nine to 11, which only happened once a summer. And like, it's already swimming at night, which are, it like feels like you're being bad, so that's great. But then also the adults usually get out of the pool from nine to 11. No, no adult wants to swim after dark. They'd rather just stay on the grass and get drunk with their friends. Also, they turn on these giant overhead lights right at nine o'clock to signal the start of the night swim so that the whole pool becomes this sort of blue diamond kid fantasy world where we can be anything we want. For two hours, it's just our land in the middle of the pool. But right now it's 8.45 and I see orange shorts or Kevin or whatever his name is get out of the pool on the opposite side and I lose him in, in this sort of dim grassy area by the fence. And right then, the lifeguard blows their whistle, and everybody gets out of the pool. It all clears out. Now the kids go back to their towels, right? And the moms are trying to do mom things, like getting them to, you know, uh, eat food. Um, you know, like, honey, just a, a piece of cheese or something, a piece of candy. You know, you've got two more hours of swimming. You don't want to cramp up. I went back to my towel, too. And my mom tried the same mom stuff, you know. It was a little calmer. She said, honey, why don't you finish your walking taco that you didn't finish earlier? Now, in case you don't know, a walking taco is a, is a bag of Fritos with uh, chili or hot dog sauce and liquid cheese in it. And it's pretty good when it's, when it's hot, but it, this was cold. I ate it anyway because I was kind of hungry, but the whole time I was keeping my eye on the other side of the pool where I had seen orange shorts get out, you know? And so I tried to bring it up casually, and I was just like, Mom, um, would you... Uh would you, is it, I think I'm going to swim on the other side of the pool if it's okay with you for the night swim. Now, my mom had been, shall we say, uh, not swimming for a couple hours at this point, so she was pretty laid back about it. She just said, okay, baby, just stay where I can see ya. So I went down to the edge of the pool. And I walked the line of kids that had all gone back down to the edge of the water to wait. And we still had, you know, probably a few minutes before the, the lights came on and the, and the night swim started. But they were there just sort of covered in slashes of cherry juice and potato chip crumbs, just breathing heavy, looking at the water. And they looked like a, like a band of Vikings getting ready to raid a village. And I got to the far corner of the pool and I turned. And I tried to look for where Orange Shorts was, and I couldn't see him at all. There was so many people over there, you know? And there were people turning on radios and people yelling like, Hey, Helen, I haven't seen you since the barbecue. And then right then, a flash of light and a whistle. And just then, the whole pool erupted into this frothy mess of kids just... <laughs> everybody running into the water except for one kid, just 10 feet from me. Like once everybody else had cleared out, it, it, he was really right there, orange shorts. And he stopped once he saw me looking at him. And I got a little closer and, and a little closer. And then finally I was so close that if I didn't say something, it'd be a little awkward. So I, I swallowed and I said, hi, my name's Dane. Now, at this point, I could see two little versions of, of the pool reflected in his eyes, and I knew that that pool was full of kids all pretending to be whatever they wanted, you know, mermaids, pirates, their fantasy, you know? So I should not have been surprised when this boy looked at me and he said, 
My name's Voltan, destroyer of stars. My eyes got wide. And I said, well, know this, Voltan. This is my water world, and I am its defender. And his eyes narrowed, and he said, yes, I know. I've come here to meet you in battle. The way that you run When you're not supposed to run Awkward corners of a big dream Did bulge in my denim heart Long before I knew your name Voltan destroyer of stars come at last to my water world your evil plan your laser beam it's no match at all it's no match at all from my own dark mind. Now let us not go all this long night and only talk of empire. They must have had tenderness where you're from And our mothers and our fathers, they're drunk on the grass with their radios And their dry clothes, and no one is watching now, and we're all alone water all around so we're both not afraid at least I'm not afraid are you smell of chlorine but the taste of the sea for an hour now they've been looking calling our names but one destroyer of stars and me my gun to his head his gun to my head 